Good day Groove Makers, we're already here with a video on how to create an instrument rack using sounds you recorded with your microphone. And we'll show you guys step by step how to use Ableton Live's native devices to uh, process the sounds you recorded and to create your own custom racks and come up with your own unique sounds. So before we dive in and show you guys how I designed this rack, let's hear what it sounds like. So this particular instrument rack sounds like an organ, uh, something you would typically hear in a house track or a deep house track. And I'm really excited how this thing turned out, man. It's, it's lush and has a little bit of grit to it. And I'm really excited to show you guys uh, how I made this rack. So before we get into the actual bringing in the devices and creating this rack, I want to show you guys the actual recording that I recorded. Uh, it was me shuffling around some rocks in this decorative plate I have in my bathroom. So uh, this is what it sounds like. So it's pretty interesting that, uh, you know, I started off with this, this rock sound and uh, ended up with this organ sound. So I'm really excited about it. So uh, yeah, let's dive right in and I'll show you guys how I made this thing. So first things first, we're going to create a MIDI track by hitting uh, Command Shift T. Next, we're going to bring in a simpler device. Then we're going to drag our audio into the simpler device. Now the next thing I did was uh, I adjusted these loop start points and the loop ending points. And uh, I had to find like a sweet spot, something that sound, something musically I could use to create this rack. And this took me quite a bit of time to kind of uh, find this sweet spot. You know, I just kept playing with the, the brackets here, the loop lengths and uh, the filters. And then I finally found something that I like to use. So uh, to save some time, I'm going to uh, just actually copy over this one. That way I'm not wasting much time trying to find the sweet spot, the exact same sweet spot. So I'm going to hit uh, Control C here. Come over here, hit Control V. All right, now let's hear what we got now. All right, not really pleasing to the ear. But uh, let's process this further. So the next thing I did was group this track, hitting Command G. Then I opened up my uh, chain list here. And uh, the problem with this recording is I record it in mono. So the audio is only coming off the left speaker. And uh, I want it to be stereo. So what I did to uh, correct that was I duplicated my chain by hitting Command D. And then I went into my audio effects, brought in a utility device, and then right here on the stereo, I swapped it. So now this, this side should be coming out of uh, the right speaker. So let's test this. Yep, right speakers. Now together we should have a stereo sound, but still pretty unpleasing to the ear. Uh, the next thing I did was uh, I wanted to give the left and right slightly different sound just to kind of make uh, it sound a little bit more wide and uh, just a little bit more unique. So on the right channel here, I transpose this up three semitones. Okay, let's hear this now. Just sounds a little, a lot, a little bit more wide, a little bit more interesting, but still pretty harsh. So. The next thing I did was, let's see here, let's open up this macros. And I'm going to MIDI map our decay to macro 4. All right, so now we got a little bit more control. Um, I kept the filters off uh, because I'm going to bring in the auto filter and do some filtering with the auto filter uh, rather than the built-in filter and simpler. So uh, let's bring in filter. I'm actually going to bring in two filters. I'm going to use one for a high pass and one for a low pass. So let's bring them both in here. Okay, we'll turn our filter type to a low pass here. 
and we'll keep this one at a high pass. Now I'm going to take all three devices here by hitting uh, shift, click, and then hitting control G, I'm going to create another rack. So now we have all these devices within another rack here. Um, I'm going to take the filter frequency here and I'm going to map this to map macro one and rename it. This will be our low cut. And then on the other filter, I'm going to do the exact same thing, and this will be our high cut. Map that to macro two. Rename it high cut. Or low pass, same thing, same thing. Now let's set some settings here. So let's cut our lows at, uh, I don't know, say 120 or so, and uh, our high is, we'll try 700. Now let's hear what this sounds like. All right, it's a, it's a bit low, it's, you know, and it's still not very pleasing to the ear. So to bring this up, a couple octaves, I'm gonna go into the MIDI devices here, and I'm gonna grab a pitch device, and I'm gonna bring this in before the rack that the simplers are in, so I can adjust both of them at the same time. So I'm going to turn this up to, uh, let's try 36. All right, so starting to get there, starting to take its shape. The next thing that I did was turn this into a chord. So I can just hit one note and be able to play a chord. While we're in the MIDI effects here, I'm going to go into uh, the chord device and we'll bring the chord after the pitch device. Now let's MIDI map some of these, uh, or macro map rather, some of these uh, settings here. So we got our first shift, we'll map this to uh, macro five. Let's do the third one to macro six. And then the fourth one here to seven. Now to get that kind of a deep house type sound, I shifted uh, the first one to four. The second one to nine, and then fourth to 12. So one octave higher than the root. So now let's see what this thing sounds like. Getting there, but still not quite right. You know, I think that on the original rack, I might have did some slight adjustments on the right channel. So let me double check that. Yeah, see we did uh, three semitones. Oh, okay, oh, okay, my uh, start point and my loop length is just slightly different than the left channel. So uh, to save some time, I'm gonna copy this one over to our rack. That way I don't have to you know waste a bunch of time fussing around trying to find the sweet spot. All right, now let's try this. Here what it sounds like. Hey, hey, all right, it's getting there. Actually, I think, you know, let me double check. I think that might've been it. Ah, nope, I did some parallel processing. So we got the fundamental sound here going. We can definitely take it further and, you know, and enhance the sound, make it sound much full, a little better and pleasing to the ear. So bring in a, uh, audio effects rack and we're gonna bring this after our instrument rack so this first rack is our instrument rack we got two simplers same piece of recorded audio uh, with just slightly different settings one is coming out the left speaker and one is coming out the right speaker so we got a pretty wide stereo field going on here so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna process this entire sound all the sound that comes out of this rack we're gonna process it with an audio effects rack with uh, multiple chains of effects. So first thing they want to do is uh, add some reverb. So let's go into our reverb device. Drop that in. It'll create a chain here. Let's rename it verb. And uh, when you're parallel processing, it acts much like how 
a return track would work. So you want your dry and wet, all the way wet, 100% wet. And I'm gonna swap this out for a preset. So I got a little hot swap button here and let's try uh, medium haul. All right, now let's hear what this thing sounds like. All right, it sounds a little washed out, but to fix that, we're gonna create another chain. I'm gonna right click, create chain, and I'm gonna name this dry. So command R to rename. So now we'll have the signal will come out our instrument rack and it'll pass through both the dry chain and the verb chain. So these are running in parallel now. So let's hear what it sounds like. All right, so the reason I did this is because the dry chain will run, will pass through unaffected. And then we'll have a parallel verb running in, uh, side by side of each other. So I don't, I'm not losing any of the dynamics of the original sound, but I'm just adding the verb on top of it. It's a second layer. So uh, not only are we adding effect to the sound, but we're also uh, maintaining the original sound without it being washed out. So I'm going to turn this down just a little bit, just a little too much reverb going on. Let's try, uh, I don't know, negative eight. And next thing I want to do is add a little bit of movement to this sound. So what I did was I used a chorus effect. And then I chose an auto pan. And then uh, because this is a parallel effect, I'm going to turn the, the wet to 100%. And I'm gonna bring up the pan amount just slightly. Let's try 30. Um, I'm gonna bring the rate down just a little bit here. And let's uh, solo this and hear what this sounds like. So a little bit of movement there. I'm gonna uh, rename this chorus. All right, now let's hear all three together. And then you can always, you know, adjust the uh, the modulation here, you know, to fine tune your sound. Now I wanted to uh, thicken this up just a little bit more. It sounded a little bit thin. So to do that, I could take live saturator device. I'm gonna use the bit warmer preset. I'm gonna drop this in. Hit Command R to rename it. I'm going to call this Drive. I'm going to turn the wet to 100%. And I'm going to, uh, let's take this down to about negative 8. And our chorus down, let's try negative 6. Now the reason I'm bringing down the volumes on all these is because each chain is its own signal. So now we have four signals running through here. So essentially it's just doubling up the sound twice. So, I mean, when we sold the dry here, you now that's one signal path, but now we have four signal paths. So it's going to be four times louder. Okay. So we got to bring that down just a little bit to kind of um, not clip, you know, so we're not clipping the, the sound here. I think what I did last was use lies gel compressor or glue compressor, compressor rather. Let's see, uh, let's choose a preset. Which one's this? And we're bring this after uh, the audio effects rack. So that way we'll use it to help kind of glue these four signal paths together. And uh, make it loud. No, which one did I use over here? Uh, add sustain, okay. Let me see here. See if I did the chorus section right. Yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna swap this out by uh, hitting the hotspot button here. Alternatively, I can hit Q. Q will activate the hotspot as well. I'm gonna widen my browser a little bit and uh, we did add sustain. All right, now let's hear what this thing sounds like. Aha, 
There it is, sounding much better. So uh, awesome, you know. To, you know to recap, you know we brought in the simpler device, we dragged in our recorded audio, and then we adjusted the start and loop points to kind of find a, a sweet spot, a part in the recorded audio that was musically pleasing to the ear. And then we grouped the simpler, and then from the group simpler, this particular sound was in mono, so I had to use a utility device to swap channels so that I'm getting a signal out of the left and right channel. And then after that, we grouped the rack again into another group, so we got a we got a rack inside of a rack, and then we added the MIDI pitch device so we could bring up pitch uh, two octaves, or three octaves rather, just so that we uh, are not so low. This is a chord, like an organ type sound, so we wanted this to be just a little bit higher in the, frequ or in the or, yeah, frequency range rather. And then uh, we added a MIDI chord effect, and we shifted our chords to plus four semitones, plus nine semitones, and then one octave, 12 semitones, and uh, that filled out our sound quite a bit. And then lastly, we uh, added um, a high pass filter and a low pass filter, and we macroed those. So now we can adjust, uh, you know, bring kind of the harshness down from our sound, or the rock sound I had recorded was a little bit harsh on the ear, so I wanted to uh, take out a lot of highs with a with a low pass and then uh, I wanted to take some of the lows out so I'm not fighting frequencies with my bass and my kick. And then lastly, uh, we created an audio effects rack here and we added four chains. We got one chain with a reverb, 100% wet. We have our dry chain so that we have an unaffected signal passing through. And then we have our uh, chorus and pan chain to give our sound a little bit of movement. And then our drive chain to uh, kind of thicken up the sound and give it just a little bit more grit. And um, then we finally gelled all of our sounds together with a glue compressor with the Mastering Ad Sustain preset. And uh, we got our, our, our Deep House chord going. Oh, our decay is down. Let's turn this back up. Very nice. So I hope this inspires you guys to go out and uh, try recording some sounds and creating your own racks and playing around the settings and coming up with uh, some unique sounds. So enjoy, have fun, see you at the next one.